Hi, I'm Susan Taylor Brown. Welcome to Poppiness. I thought I would do a little show and tell about some of the books I've made that started me on my bookmaking journey and how I got addicted to this paper passion of mine. I started off making books that came from just a single sheet of paper and that came because I was teaching incarcerated students and we were te I was teaching poetry but we also had to do some kind of an art project and so for me as a writer it seemed natural to want to make some kind of a book and these were some pretty easy one page books you could make where you cut them you know you, you fold a piece of paper certain ways you can google it to find lots of directions on one sheet of paper books and then you could fold it up into a book and you could either glue the pages together or not so this was the sort of thing that I did and this one I made a little cover just to experiment with that and it soon became an addiction for me that anytime I had a piece of paper that maybe I had painted on and it didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to, I would cut it up into a book and start gluing pages together. And then I could do some stamping or I could add some collage images and I could do some stenciling. I could do some pen work, which is something I really enjoyed doing when I'm watching TV. So it was just a real fun way to use up some of my um, leftover painted papers because I was also starting to play with paint. These were made from, uh, like I think this one was an 8 by 8 piece of paper, this was a 6 by 6 piece of scrapbook paper, and this would be a 12 by 12 inch piece of scrap paper. So very simple little books. This one has, I wish I could remember what I did with it. It has the most amazing texture. It feels like metal. It's real rough, and I mean it looks like rusted metal, and I have no idea what I did or I would replicate it again. And they all come out differently and they're just they're, they don't take a lot of time to make and they don't take a lot of time to fill so that was a really fun thing for me to play around with um, this was another experiment we all use baby wipes or at least most of us I think use baby wipes to wipe up our messes when we're painting and of course they have a really neat texture and leftover colors and they made a really good cover for a book as well so then I was into the artist trading card phase and so I had ton I cut so many things up to the size of an ATC and then just started slopping my leftover paint on things and of course you know they never went anywhere they just kind of sat here and so then I used them to experiment with different ways to bind books this is just a simple masking tape binding and of course it needs lots of layers of something else in them but this one was washi tape glued, glued down and I started filling it with little collage images and just, like I said, fun things to do in front of the television. This one's probably masking tape as well. Just a lot of backgrounds waiting to be filled. This one was um, index cards, I think. And what I did is I folded the index cards in half to make a signature. And then by doing that, then I could masking tape those together. Uh, yeah, that's what these are. Again, just waiting to be filled. I really like doing the covers. So, it was an addiction. Lots of little books to make. They're not all filled yet. And then, oh, then I discovered junk journals. And that was another fun thing. How can you reuse something that has been around for a while? And I don't know which way I have this, upside down or right side up. I think this is the way it was supposed to go. And so this was an envelope. I think I watched Kylie Koo's studio and she had done something like this. And I discovered I really didn't care for working with envelopes very much at that time. So I haven't done anything else with it. But it was an experiment and it was I liked the cover better than I liked the insides of the book. Then there were, let's see, what else do we have here? This was... All the pages in this one are covered with masking tape, which looks really cool, but gluing stuff down to them, not so much. Then, ah, this was another one of the little one-page books. I do like the colors in that. I just haven't figured out what needs to go on the pages. The toilet paper roll books. And so I thought, well, gosh, you know, who doesn't have a whole bunch of those, you know, that they go through? I would play around with those, and they're really quick and easy to do with, you know, like an elastic binding. And, you know, they, they came out okay, but I didn't really enjoy making them. It's a little tag, little pocket, little tie. They just didn't float my boat as much as some of the other things. This one was with tea-dyed paper. 
In fact, I think I kind of stressed out over making these a lot more than I have over some of the other ones. This was because I wanted to see about making just a tie binding. I hadn't done that before. So this was just an experimental flow book. Just filled with book pages right now. Nothing, no embellishments. I just wanted to practice the construction. So that is waiting, waiting to be filled. But then there were these offshoots. Okay, the little tiny one, one sheet of paper books. This is my meander book. And I think I have a video that shows this in single shots because I couldn't figure out how to flip it very easily on the video. And it's in black and white, so it's really hard probably to see. I don't know whether you can see. But the thing about this, it's a one sheet of paper that's cut and folded in certain ways. So then you can read it in all these different directions every way you tip it. And this was fun because this was a, a lot of these photos were left over from a book project that I was working on that never quite made it through the publishing house. That's a long story for another video. And so I was really happy to figure out a way to use X. I'm very addicted to these old photos and I love anything that has to do with reading because for many, many years I was a writer uh, primarily of children's books. So because I still had a lot of pictures left over and I didn't like the way that one didn't show things off as well as I wanted to, this one is made from old business cards and it's got the string binding with a little elastic tie on it. And so what I did is each index card was a page and then I glued the index cards together. I'm sorry. Am I lying? I'm lying. I did not glue the index cards together in this one. They're all done as a single signature and the, the twine binding. But this does make it a little bit easier to see the pictures and the quotes. And the quotes came about, they're not mine, they came about from a poll I did about 15 years ago when I was working on this book. And I asked people to tell me what reading meant to them. And so they sent me these marvelous quotes about how important reading was to them and I matched them up with these old photos and then I had put them into book form and was hoping for a nice little coffee table book and the publishers thought it was a great idea but they wanted me to get rid of the everyday people and get quotes from famous people and that wasn't the book that I wanted to write so I said no thank you there you have the whole story now about my book of reading that never made it into print so I'm going to be doing things with these for a long time because even though I'm not writing children's books anymore I have been a reader all my life and at one time my husband and I had a library in our old house of about she's 10,000 books I know it's insane we bought the house because it had a room big enough for a library and it was bliss but it was a big house for just two people and it had stairs for people that were getting older so we're very happy to have sold the house in the city and moved to a house in the country where I just finished, just finished reservation, renovations, reservations. Perhaps we had reservations about our renovations that we did that gave me an art studio. So I'm very pleased with the colors on this book. I'm less in love with this style of binding for a book that you want to read in all, all the time. Here's my index card book that was glued together. This one again I think has a video of still photos on it. I am a big dog lover. We have a white German Shepherd who pretty much rules the roost so when I find great dog pictures I save them and I would be embarrassed to show you the collection of fussy cut collage images that I have of dogs but I can't help it. I just love them. So this is made from used index cards and I would do my wipe off paint on them and then I made little scenes on each one. And this one, it is where each of the pages is glued to the back of another page. So there's paint, there's stencils, there's fabric. I'm not fabric, um, fancy paper. And then of course, the dog images that are all cut from magazines. And it does sort of tell a story, at least to me. I just love dogs. Any kind of dog. I love dogs. If I was younger, I would have a house full of dogs. 
but I think one is probably all I can handle right now. And this is kind of where I really started to think about how am I going to put books together to do the kind of art and storytelling that I want to do. This one I did not know quite about how to do the hidden seam thing, so I glued the first index card and the back index card to the cover, and it works, but it could work better. One of the other things I love are tiny things, and so I had a whole bunch of little tiny scraps, and I made this little tiny book. I had an old dictionary that was falling apart, and you know, I wanted to save some of the pictures. I mean, you know, they're just really cool pictures. And so this is a tiny book of verbs because I love verbs. As a writer, verbs are very important. And so I just took some of the pictures out of here. And it's scrap paper that was who knows what to start with, maybe even um, notebook paper. I don't know. I just put lots of layers of paint on it and took paint off and dripped ink on it, put little pieces of paper, threads, And a lot of Chinese gold paint, and it seems like, or Chinese green paint, I think that's what it's called. It seems like I go to, that's my go-to a lot. Well, I'll be glad when my gooseneck holder comes. It'll be a lot easier than trying to maneuver this around the weird way I have my camera set up right now. And this one, again, I glued the back of one page to the front of the next page to put it all together. And the cover is made from a piece of cardboard, um, not real thick cardboard, kind of like it would get maybe in a Band-Aid box or something. And I rip the shiny parts off of one side and I rip the back side off. And then I layered it again with paint and took paint off and ink and alcohol and just basically abused the poor piece of cardboard. And as a result, it's got a wonderful texture that feels an awful lot like leather. And so that's how my addiction started for making books. And now I'm into the idea of making vintage junk journals. And I have been collecting materials and gutting books and fussy cutting botanicals. And you can expect to see more of those from me very soon. If you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll click the subscribe button and follow me along on my bookmaking journey. Thank you.